I got something that's, uh, that's popped in my head, and um, I started doing some, some research on it, and it, it really, it, it came around pretty amazing to me. Um, so how many guys work in a business? How many guys um, are managers or own a business or, or run people? Anybody? Okay. Have you guys ever heard of this, th this new thing that they call PTO? I thought that was power takeoff. It's still, <laughs> right? I thought that was the thing you flip on and turns the hydraulics on for, uh, for the pump or, the, uh, or the, 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 you know, whatever you're running, for my tractor, whatever else. PTO is no longer PTO. It is now paid time off. And we're sitting there, and, <laughs> and I'm like, paid time off? And so this one, this one gal, actually, she, uh, she decided that she wanted to give her two weeks. I'm like, why are you giving her two weeks? She's like, well, because you guys don't pay, do PTO. I'm like, so you're quitting because I'm not giving you free money? And she's like, no, I earn it. No, you don't. You don't that's paid time off. You just get time to, no, you earn a vacation time. Um, we've always done vacation time, but paid PTO on top of your vacation? I don't know. It, it's, you know, small business minds are a little bit different, <laughs> I guess. I don't, it's just, I'm like, if you don't earn it, you don't get it. You know, that's just how my head's always been. If I, you know, you, you work to eat and you, and you eat to work and you, you know, this, this is one big cycle. And, that, and now we got people with their hands out and, and they don't, and they do kind of a, a half way job. And, you know, it's like, what in the heck is going on? So we started getting a little bit compliant with, uh, with what we're doing. And we started giving people a little bit more benefits, right? And through time, I'm noticing that the people that we give benefits, I'm getting less quality out of them. Have you guys noticed this? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Am I the only one? I'm the only one. I give people these benefits, and they come back for more. Their hand is out like this. The people I haven't given benefits to are still working their butts off and doing for a different reason. So I started looking around. I'm like, why is it that if I reward somebody on a consistent basis, that all of a sudden I start losing productivity on these people. So I started doing some research, and I found a, a study uh, that was done, I think it's Stanford, uh, where they took a bunch of elementary school kids. And these kids love to draw. They love to paint, right? They're artists. They're little bitty elementary school kids. And they love to do it. And they bring them into these, in these classrooms once a week, and they start, they let these kids draw and paint whatever they want to do. And they, and they display them at the college. Well. After a couple of weeks, they start rewarding these kids with a sucker or a sticker on their painting. And this kind of goes on for uh, quite some time. And next thing you know, they want to see what happens if you start taking away the sticker. So they start, the kids keep painting and drawing, and, and uh, they start taking away the sticker. What they found in a matter of a week or two, that the kids that love to draw going in, if they don't get their reward of the sticker, they don't draw no more. They stop drawing. Their reward for drawing has gone away. So I'm like, huh, that's weird. They did the same thing with, uh, with kids reading. They love to read. These kids come into, in, into the study, and, and these kids love to read. They'll read like a, you know, they'll read one book in the time that I would, you know, they'll read 10 books in the time that I would read a magazine, right? It, it's like these guys love to read. Well, they, started, they did the same thing, where they would give these kids rewards for every book. You know, you like, you've just seen that before when you were in school where you read a book and you kind of work your way across the ladder and you get the big prize at the end. Well, they would give them a reward every single time they would read a book or finish a book. Well, they stopped doing the rewards at the end and these kids that love to read stopped reading. I'm like, that is fascinating. That is really, really fascinating. I never, because I, I just saw it in my own life at, at, at work. I'm trying to figure out how we're getting this, how this works. And so... I start looking at the guys that are, are, uh, that are doing their job with just, their, uh, they're getting paid well, but they're not getting the, all the benefits. They've not been there long enough, they're getting, but they're not getting all the benefits. And I'm starting just kind of behind the scenes talking to them, not really telling them that I'm, I'm studying them, <laughs> but I'm just talking to them. I said, why do you do your job? Why do you love this job? And they're like, you know what, Josh, I love this job because it's, it, it is the one job and they give me their reasons. I'm like, that is amazing. And I talked to the other guys that, um, that, I'm, that get the benefits. I said, why do you guys come to work every day? Well, because I get a paycheck, because I make this much amount an hour. I'm like, okay, stark difference between the two groups of people. And then I'll tell you what, the, the amount of stress levels that it puts on me as, as someone that's trying to manage these guys, 
is night and day compared to the ones that are making money to the ones that are still climbing that ladder. Isn't it crazy? So there's actually, there's actually science behind this, um, believe it or not. And so I decided to look it up, and, and I found this, this quote here. And that's not the one. I want this one here. And it says this. It says, external rewards are not sustainable motivators. Research shows that intrinsic motivation, internal drive, is more sustainable than external rewards in achieving long-term goals. So what they found is that if, when you, you guys have all known this. You guys, all, you guys all do this in your life. I have a kid in my house who is 17 years old who, if I don't pay him, he doesn't sweep or mop the floor. And even if I do pay him, he does it half wet. Can I get an amen on that one? Anybody else got that problem, right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. That same kid will spend hours doing something that he likes, that he's motivated on, that he gets an internal reward on, playing video games. There is no external reward with that. It's an internal reward 100%. If you ever played a video game, it's an internal reward. 100%. It's kind of like watching a, a movie with a terrible ending. You know what I'm talking about? You ever watch this movie like, ah, and then they just like end with them walking down the road. It's like, I need closure. I mean, seriously, <laughs> this is terrible. There was no internal reward. It was a nice movie, good build-up, good character development. Next, you know, it's like, poof, just stops. I'm like, that is ridiculous. <laughs> I want some, I need something here. But this, this kid in my house, he'll play video games for hours and hours and hours, learning the details, the keystrokes, the, the, uh, the thumb movements, the finger movements, whatever it is, whatever he's playing, to beat the game and to move on to the next level. And he'll get his team of people and they will learn this game together for hours and hours till the, wee, early, till the wee hours in the morning. Hours and hours and hours. Yes, he's a teenager. But he's motivated. He's got something that motivates him to do something. It's just something that I don't agree with because it does nothing for the house. It just burns up my Wi-Fi, my electricity, and then he's... You gotta wake him up in the morning to go to work or go to school. And that kind of ticks me off. Right? He's like, You're a freaking 17, get up. You know? And he doesn't care for that either. But I was, I was talking to uh, my wife yesterday. I said, Why do you, why'd you sweep the floor this, this afternoon? She said, What do you mean? I said, Why do you sweep the floor? She said, Well, there's dirt down on the floor. I said, Okay. Did, were you mad that you had to sweep the floor? She's like, Well, no. I wasn't mad about sweeping the floor. I said, Okay. Were you happy about sweeping floors? I, I don't care. It's just kind of part of what I do. I said, were you happy with the finished results? Oh, my gosh, yes. Look, look, that's amazing. I'm like, yeah. Why did you do that? Just what I do. So, but it made you happy at the end of the day. Yes. It's like a happy floor makes me a happy person. A made bed, a happy bed, makes me a happy person. May, you know, if there's not dishes in the sink because they got washed, that makes me a happy person on the inside. There's no reward other than the only reward you get with dishes is you don't have to pull it out of the sink, wash it, and then use it. You know, that is the benefit behind, that is the, the external reward you get, you know, or if you sweep your floor, you're not walking on dirt. And that really is helpful um, when you're not walking on dirt or, or when you've got dogs like we do where you walk around in your socks and they become fuzzy socks. They're, they're so pretty. <laughs> they're amazing. But, and they don't get any more comfortable. That's the thing. They don't get any more comfortable. They just get fuzzier. They look, they look like I can't I sweep my floor with my sock. You know? <laughs> but it, it's amazing the things that we do that is internal or externally motivated. If you think about it in your life, what are you doing that is an internal motivation or internal reward versus an external reward, right? I don't know what you do. I don't know your life. You know, for me, I, I love finishing projects. Um, I've got one project that I'm still working on for the last three years, and it's not there, but I got uh, two-thirds of one wall done over three years. It's, it's amazing. Um, it's starting to look really nice, and I finally got me a new tile saw, so I can work with it and get my tile done in my bathroom. But I just got done with that, that, that pan of, 
of, uh, uh, of Thinset, and I'm just throwing it up there, and I get done, and I step back, and I'm like, that is nice. That looks cool. And then I look at the other stuff, I'm like, oh, crap. I've got a lot to do, but that looks cool, right? I got an internal reward for doing something, and eventually, you know, my kids are hoping and they're praying that I'll get this dummy before they move out so they can use the shower. We only have one shower in my house right now for the last three years. Um, and it's in my bedroom, which doesn't make me happy at all. I really wake up, I'm like, can I take a shower? <sighs> yes, hurry up. I need to use the restroom. But, um, you know, the, in the internal versus external rewards. It, it's, it's amazing how they work out. You get the external rewards. If you're doing something for an external reward, you are, that is your reward, period. That is your reward. You do things for the internal reward that grows, right? You, uh, you, you, say you say you're a painter and you draw and make a painting and you draw and you, and you keep drawing and you keep drawing. And so you have several paintings of the same kind, just kind of tweaked here and there. And, but one of the paintings you sell and you get paid for it. There's actually a study that was shown that people that, that are artists that would start getting paid for their paintings lose interest. Here's another story about the old man. You guys ever heard this story about the old man? Maybe not. Maybe so. I'll tell you and you tell me. There's an old man that sits out on his, on his porch every day and these young kids come up and they start throwing out jokes at him. Start making fun of him. What's up, old crouchy old man? You can't barely walk. You need to use a diaper. You know, I mean, all these different rude statements to this old man. This old man just sits there and takes it, right? He wants to get something, do some violence on these kids, but he, he can't walk that well, and he's not, he's not going to do him very good. So he starts thinking about it, and he starts coming up with an idea. He's like, okay, i got an idea. So the kids come over to make fun of him, and before they start their insults, he's like, hey, got a question for you guys, a little proposition. How about tomorrow you guys come over, and you can make fun of me, and when you do come over, I'm going to give you a dollar. The kids are stoked. Like, absolutely amazing. We can do what we love and get paid for it. Amazing. So they go away and come back the next day, and just to the man's word, the kids come over, they make fun of him, and he gives them all a dollar. He's like, listen, come back tomorrow. I'm going to give you 50 cents. And so they come back tomorrow, same thing. Give him 50 cents, they make fun of him, loving it. And he does this all the way up to a penny. He's like, come back tomorrow, I'll give you a penny. All of a sudden, the kids are like, you know what? That ain't worth my time. <laughs> what they used to love to do, they got their reward. Your reward is your external reward. And that's all you get. But the things of the heart, the things that God cares about, are rewards that are stored up in heaven. Now watch this. I'm going to run through some, uh, some verses real quick. I'm going to show you guys something. Let's go with uh, Ephesians uh, 2, 8, and 9. Let's see if we can find it real quick. Ephesians 2... Hey, we're going to start right there. For grace, you have been saved through faith, and then not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not works, lest anyone should boast. What is that verse saying? God gives us the ability. I'm going to show you these verses in the Bible that has shown this psychology that God wrote in the Bible thousands of years ago. How the internal rewards have been blessing people's lives for thousands of years because that's where God lives, is in your heart. He doesn't live out here. He lives in your heart. And he has been teaching, the Bible has been teaching us for thousands of years, but for me, about 47, 46, let's say 46 because I don't remember much of my first year. 46 years I've been learning about how God is showing us the human psychology that if you get your reward out here, that is your reward. If you do something to receive something, that's your reward. What he's saying right here, that he gives you what? For it's through his grace you have been saved. Through faith that not of yourself, but it's a gift of God, not for works, lest anyone could boast. So he's like saying, listen, this is yours. This is for free. You can do what you want to do. I give you a way. I give you a way to make this work. Let's walk into another one real quick. Let's go with... Um, 
No, let's not do that one. It's okay. Yeah. I like this one. Let's go to Matthew 6, 24. This is pretty cool. Matthew 6, there you are, 24. Boom, nailed it. It was on a Saturday. Okay, Matthew 6, 24 says this. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot have God and money. It's amazing. He's been telling us these things, and we, for whatever reason, we still pay our kids an allowance. We reward our dogs for sitting down. <laughs> Good boy, here's a treat. Now all he's going to do is sit, now why is he going to sit down? He doesn't sit down because he's supposed to. He doesn't sit down because he gets the external reward. Like any good dog, I got three of them. I got a puppy that I'm just now starting to like. Because <laughs> he does not listen to me at all. I'm yelling at him more than anything else. And my wife is getting really tired of me yelling at this dog. She told me so yesterday. <laughs> so I know that's a fact. <laughs> and... This dog finally is coming up to me when I call it. You know what I give him? I give him love. Not a stinking treat. He gets the treats when his breast smells bad. Right? That's when he gets his treats. But, now I'm not a dog trainer. Right? I don't train my dog to do anything but be loyal to me and protect my stuff. That's it. You get past the dogs, you can have whatever you want. Yeah, that's how that goes. Right? You get, you get in that fence and they don't... And they don't if they start licking you to death, they'll show you where the gun safe is. It's all good. Dad keeps the money over here. Come here, give me one or more of those treats. But, but that's also why I don't give my dogs treats because I don't need you to give them a treat. And they're like, hey, what's up, friend? No, 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 no. They give them a treat, they'll eat it, and then they'll still come back after you. So I don't, I don't want you in my house without me there unless I tell you how to get in there secretly. But um, that's how my dogs work. My kids... If I don't pay my kids or threaten them or yell at them, nothing gets done that they don't want to do. Right? They always do what they want to do because they get the reward. But there is no reward with sweeping a floor for them. There's not even a reward for making their dog on bed or putting away their clothes. As long as there's a place for it to go, that's fine. The floor, the basket, the top of whatever. The bottom of their bed, whatever. It's fine. I'll find it. It's okay. And I guess we've given them so many clothes that they have so many options that who cares where they put the clothes? As long as, yeah, we're good. <laughs> Out we go. <laughs> we can't serve two masters. It talks about money, and I've always seen this thing as, as money, but now I'm looking at this as we can't serve two masters. We can't serve God and external rewards. It just doesn't work. Now, like any good father, he does give us external rewards. Did you know that? Yeah. He sure does. But it's not because we did anything to get it, but it's because he loves us. Mm -hmm. Right? It's kind of like this. There's... There's a, a uh, I heard, I heard that somebody talk about how, let's see how, how this went, that if God gives us good things, is that because we did anything for it, or, or is it because, for example, I talked about giving, how does it make you feel? Just because it blessed somebody else, how does it make you feel? It makes you feel doggone good, right? So if it makes you feel good by giving to somebody, and then say you get something in return for it, right? Say I give that guy $20 and he buys me a cheeseburger as well as his family a cheeseburger. Did I, and I accept that reward, did I all of a sudden do that good deed, that nice thing for somebody, not out of love but because I get something? Treating. Right? Did I just do that? If God told me to do it, it doesn't matter what comes back at me. Now, here's another way to look at it. Say Greg decides to bring home Shannon some, some flowers. I know it's rare, but say he does. 
And Shannon's like, oh my gosh, that is so amazing. Thank you so much, Greg. You're so, you're so amazing. And Greg's just like got slobber all over his face. He's so happy. Like, he's like, you're welcome, baby. <laughs> yeah, he gets his internal reward. Well, then she runs over to her purse and pulls out $100. And she, I, meant to be, I meant to give this to you. He's like, dude, this is way more than the flowers. And I said, okay, you have it. Does, and Greg takes it, puts it in his pocket. Did Greg's gift all of a sudden become null and void? No. No. You did your intention, your motivation. You know, she decided to give you 100 bucks. Why? I don't care. That's a good idea. You know, I'll take the 100 bucks. But <laughs> you also got the internal reward. There, see, the, an external reward, getting something is not a bad thing. It's whenever your motivation is changed. Whenever you're looking for your healing from God and that's your focus and it's not on God anymore. Whenever you're looking at your prosperity coming from God, but all of a sudden you can't see that you're not seeing the dollar signs hitting your bank. And you're like, is God even real? All of a sudden you're serving the other master. We can look at all these promises of God. God promised me where two or more are gathered in his name. Right? We can get on this. We can show you all the promises of God. But I tell you what, if the promises of God is what you're looking at, you are no longer serving God. You are serving the other master. You're looking for the external reward. Trying to see how this is going to come up here in our life. There's a verse in the Bible that says, store up your treasures in heaven. And I can actually tell you where that's at because I actually wrote it down. Hang on. Look at this. I'm not sure if I want to read it to you. It's Matthew 6, 28. We're going to read it. Because I actually wrote the whole verse down right here. <laughs> but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. I'll tell you what. God says that he has provided everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. Actually, I want to walk a little bunny trail with you. We, the other, on New Year's Day, we had uh, brought up um, some stuff about the full armor of God. And, and this was the first time I've ever seen this you know, whenever we were talking about this on uh, last Monday. You guys know about the full armor of God in Ephesians, uh, was it 5, 6, and 7, whatever? In Ephesians, you got the full armor of God, put therefore the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, have your feet shot of the preparation of the gospel of peace, your shield of faith, your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We talked about the, um, about the new year and, and having the, the full armor of God on and one thing that hit me while we were talking about it is, because we were talking about people in the world, and we need to talk to people in the world. And, and one thing that got me was, is how people in the world are guarded. It feels like more today than ever before. They're really guarded. They have their armor of some sort on. And then we talked about, you know, how when we talk to people, it's not about getting people in any direction, but helping them put on the armor of God, because the armor of God is a protection. It's not a, it is not an offensive tool. It is a defensive tool. It is one to protect you from the wiles of the devil, right? It is not there so you can be in God's army. It's not there so that you can fight anything. It is there to protect you. The Bible says it in several areas. It says, protect your heart. Young men, flee the appearance of evil. Protect yourself from the things that are going to jack you up. An internal reward from God is part of that protection. And that could be something as simple as the fruit of the Spirit. You guys know what the fruit of the Spirit are? Check this out. I want to show you guys something. The fruit of the Spirit is going to be in Galatians 5.19. We're going to start in 519. Nope, that's for work, not my Bible. There we go. Galatians is right before Ephesians. What did I say, 19? Thank you. And you guys can read this. We're kind of skim right through this thing real quick because I want to get down to the bottom. Uh, now the works of the flesh are evident. Now I, want to, I want you guys to think about these, these words, or you guys can read them up there. Um, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, loudness. You guys, want, l- lewdness. you guys know what that means? I had to look it up. Yes. Foul language or you're promiscuous, you dress 
provocatively or yes. I did not know what that was. I'm like, lewdness. I need to use it on somewhere, but I can't use it on my kids because they're not that way. You're being very lewd. No, I'm sorry, rude. Rude. There you go. <laughs> so, let's move on to uh, 20. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, hatred, contention, jealousy, outbursts of wrath. Think about all these things, guys. These things that are happening. These, these, are, these are what? The works of the flesh. These are your external rewards, or basically what happens when you, either they're going to be an external reward, or things that happen when you, when you don't get your external reward. These, these are the things that, that, that happen to you. These are the works of the flesh. Work it right on down to uh, envy, murder, drunkenness, revilness, and the like, of, w- of which I tell you beforehand, just as I have also told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. However, verse 22, God's internal rewards, or the fruit of the Spirit, are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, verse 22, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there are no laws. And those who are in Christ have the full armor of God on, because if you look up every piece of the armor, it actually is a description of Jesus. Every piece of the armor of God is a description of Jesus. So when it says put on the helmet of salvation, that's Jesus. The breastplate of righteousness, that's Jesus. Against this thing, there's no laws. And those who are, those who are Christ have sacrificed the flesh with its passions and desires If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become, what is that word? Conceited, Conceited, thank you. Provoking one another, envying one another. So if you read the fruit of the Spirit, go back to um, verse 22. If you read the fruit of the Spirit, all these words right here, have you guys ever been heartbroken? Have you ever been in a point to where you feel desperate and you're down on your luck? Have you ever met anybody with quote unquote mental illness? Have you met anybody that is all of a sudden struggling with depression? These words right here, fix that. Makes it go away. You don't need years and years and months and months and thousands of dollars worth of therapy. You need to know love. You need to know joy. You need to know peace. Long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. What's the next one? Gentleness, self-control. You want to talk about how to fix your life if you're hurting or somebody else's life if they're hurting? Right there. Those are the promises of God. Those are God's internal rewards. And those are the only rewards that last for a lifetime. That rust and moths can't get to. That thieves can't jump in and grab. Nobody can take your joy. You can give it away. But nobody can take your joy. Nobody can take away God's internal rewards. So my encouragement to you guys is this. When we go out there and and we're living our lives working with whoever, working with ourselves, whatever it is. And you start getting yourself into a position to where you're sad, you're unhappy, things are not working the way, you're starting to get stressed. Just stop for a second. Hit your knees and say, God, what is this? Where am I lacking? Why am I not leaning on you? Why am I not leaning on my internal rewards? What external reward am I going after that is not tickling my fancy? Maybe my, my say together is not responding correctly, according to me. Anybody ever been there? Come on now. And all of a sudden, life is just hell on earth. Hell on wheels or on a tricycle. What are you looking at? What is your focus? I always bring it up every single time I talk. Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Whatever is pure, honest, lovely, just. 
You guys can read it. Focus on these things. These are God's internal rewards. These are the things that make life run forever. And you could be happy. You guys have heard, all heard that verse, the peace that passes all understanding. How can somebody, you've seen them, I'm sure, where somebody just loses their, their, their spouse or their, somebody they love very dearly and they're not gone. They're still here. And you look at them like, how in the world? And they're like, well, God's taking care of me, right? And he puts a smile on your face. Sometimes it doesn't show up. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it does more than not, more than not. Because of your source, because of the internal rewards that you're getting are going to outweigh the external rewards even though there's sometimes it feels like they're more fun or more enjoyable, but the internal rewards actually will last a lifetime. Amen.